Okay, let's try this one. What is it you can learn from me about why men are obsessed by the things they seem to be obsessed with? For me, it's sports. I was a sportscaster, made my living at it for many years, and so I still have this way in which all of what I hold and believe is somehow represented in how some silly basketball game is going to go or sporting contest, and I identify with it in ways that are baffling to my love. Um, and you may have the same thing in another way. Is it playing poker, um, some way in which there's a hobby, uh, hunting and fishing and um, uh, all these ways, uh, repairing the car, all these ways in which <clears throat> there's something that seems to evoke a connection for the man in your world, dad, son, brother, lover, mate, that is kind of confusing. Well, for me, I think there's a relationship in here to all the early genetic reasons why we believe that we are in a duality and must win and be responsible and get things done. And, uh, and then for me, I'll use my own example. As a young man, sports became a way that I could connect with the world. I had the unusual circumstance of having the Cleveland Browns football team. And if you don't know much about sports, that may not be important to you, but it was a big deal as an eight year old kid. The fellow who we were living with was a, his brother was the lawyer for many of the players. And so here I'd watch them on television during the weekend. And then these same players without their uniforms would show up at my house and have, have a picnic on Tuesdays. So this reality kind of really struck me in that I was connected to this image on television and it made me want to be a sportscaster eventually. And so everything about sports, I kept the batting averages of every kid in my little league. Uh, I was so obsessed that that's all that I really thought about and cared about. And so what was that? What was this shamanic thing that that even I judge makes drugs and addictions in general in men's lives some reflection of a shamanic urge for oneness, to be connected to things. As a woman, you may have a, the experience much more naturally. I mean, giving birth is a totally life-altering uh, experience. The, the notion that you are generative and can be part of this life. But as a man, we're in some ways trained to be apart from it. It's our responsibility. It's our duty. It's the, the way we're measured. And so we have to be in connection with it only in terms of lose, win. So sports is a perfect place. Win, lose. And then this being part of something can, can rarely be the oneness that, um, that, that is really true. It has this piece of us versus them so war and the kind of co competition in our culture and all the ways in which the aberrant, ugly ways in which we seek oneness. I want to be the richest, most powerful, biggest, baddest. When what's really at the core of this is this desire for oneness, this willingness to recognize, as the Buddhists would say, that, that the problem is the path. I, I now have reached a place where I'm beginning, I hope to be wise enough, sage enough, elder enough, that I recognize there is no escape. That the things I've always tried to put in the way of, it should be different, I should be different, things should be better, I have, have melted away and I'm beginning to actually just be okay with what is. I, I live in, a, in an insanity that particularly goes along the lines of, relax, relax, relax. <laughs> Let go, let go, let go. <sighs> Be present for what actually is. And then in that place, I use a breath form that the, the spirit, that, as the Yoruba people would say, you're born with these spirits and that spirit is the breath and this. I mean, you can just see the difference in who I become when I take a big full breath and I fill my chest and shoulders and am inspired. And from that place, it just is what it is. And with this letting go of all the stories I have about the breath, um, about life, and about the way things are, should be, the way I should be, how they should be, how it should be in some way different, is an insanity that is an existential one for us all, where there's not really an answer. 
things just are the way they are. You're never going to change that. So the danger of facing the problems of life, suddenly all that urge to run to the sports, the addiction, the drugs, whatever it is, can be substituted for this absolute peace, which is inflected in all the sports. All the heroes I had as a child were were actually athletes who were evidencing this ability to stay in the oneness moment, be in the flow, somehow transcend all the pressure and problems of life to make the bad call, the difficult opponent, the challenging circumstance, the path, and find a way through there to the victory. Well, the victory is just to be on the path, I'm beginning to realize, rather than that the time-based duality-based way in which sports or the poker game or the fixing the engine or the hunting the creature is a substitute that evokes this awareness, but somehow is caught in the duality and the impermanence in ways that as soon as the game is over, I return to this disquiet, this unhappiness, this dis-ease of not having the sense of it's okay. Because it's not okay. And yet the only way to hold it is, since it is, that's okay. And from this place of relaxation, inspiration, it is just what it is, and a kind of patience to wait for what's about to emerge and be with it as it emerges. As the game goes on, the emotions go up and down. I identify win, lose, win, lose. No, there's something about the dance of win, lose is what's calling me. There's something about the challenge of untying the knot, fixing the me mechanical thing, creating the piece of art, sculpting a relationship with a teammate so that this sense of oneness, this connection, the whole group is operating together. We are, I am part of it all. And then that place, from that place that it's in here somewhere, I just don't see it. I can't quite see it yet. The patience to wait until it emerges. And then for me, face what is difficult. Ah, the path is to face the thing that's difficult, do the thing that's on my mind and bothering me. That's the inspiration to do in a day what needs to be done. Whatever is bothering me, whatever is worrying me, when I get to the point of inspired and relaxed, what is the thing that calls to be completed, to be touched, to be loved, to be connected with in a way that allows me to move forward? Hopefully this is something of an insight for you and or a, a path for you to understand why this addiction, these addictions, even porn in some way is a way the man is seeking to lose himself in something else. If I just can get release from this sense of it's not the way it ought to be, I can finally be at peace, even if for a moment. And then the disquiet comes and like a nymphomaniac, I've got to do it over and over again, but still the possibility exists of seeing through the illusion that every time I dance, every time I sing, every piece of music I love is just this calling back to everything is the way it is. Every person is supporting my existence. Every thing that comes is a part of the path. Every way in which I accept my lunacy, failure, inability, confusion, loss, despair, depression, it all is this beautiful opportunity to just be with it, to be on the big main team, to be part of the great one team, to be connected to everyone and everybody and everything. It is all the, to go back to Buddhist words, it's all the Buddha speaking to me. So when you're, the man in your world is lost in his addiction, his own form of lunacy, you can see through and offer that opportunity, that piece of, could the game exist without the other team? So it's not the opponent. The other team isn't the opponent anymore. The other team is part of the game for you. It allows you to have the game. They are not bad, evil. The people over there are just like you. They, in fact, are you reflected back this ability to help us 
in our culture and in our relationships see that that person over there is just a mirror for me. So the thing that bothers me about that person, I need to turn and look. It's all one. It's all this one. Every problem starts in this one. And it is, a, a, the person is a blessing to me, the, especially the person I especially don't like. That person is a blessing to me for me to see, oh, that's what's going on in me that I otherwise could never see. You are a blessing to me, brother, sister. You have helped me see this thing that is in me that is causing me to suffer unnecessarily. <sighs> And I run crazy, can't face stillness because it is so powerful in me, this wanting to escape what is true about me, what is true about life, what is true and is not going to change because I run from it, but will only change when I can fully recognize. There is no accepting it. It just is. So there's no choice about accepting it. It just is. Whew. That was a good rant. I felt, I felt that one. Hopefully you, you felt it as well. Reach out. Facebook, LinkedIn, here with a link. And uh, if my insight serves you, maybe it'll serve your man, the man in your life who you would love to have, have the awareness that he is already connected with everything. He is love itself. He is fear itself. And it's all okay. And a sense of peace can come in his life and thus in your relating with him um, and connecting with him when he doesn't have to have this illusion of self and other, but can merge it into the real deeper awareness that is available in the addiction itself. Savor instead of crave. Thank you.